My name is Johannes, I'm an architect, uh, and I hold a PhD within um, robotics, or the, the use of industrial robots uh, for creating concrete formwork and uh, adding architectural value into concrete, concrete. So this is what it's about, it's about adding uh, things into concrete that um, haven't been there before. I'll start from a project called Brightwall. Bright uh, it was a quite huge project on which um, it's a, the, the latest project that, uh, on transparency uh, in concrete, uh, quite large. So I just have to check whether this, this is kind of cool. As you see, I've had a new phone. Is it recorded? One, two, three. Thank you. Sorry for the. We start working with uh, transparency, just uh, as an introduction, we start working with transparency in concrete uh, in 2012. And this was started in 2013. Uh, it was nine partners. Now they're credited. I won't mention them one by one. We were a bunch of people meeting up in, um, in, uh, in, uh, the, in the European Commission where we had a grant of uh, 2 million euros to, to implement optic fibers in a concrete building. So this is what, on the idea scale. It had not been done before. The concept was pretty simple. It was a panel sandwich with uh, concrete on both sides and then optic fibers going through or light guides. Uh, and then of course insulation. Furthermore, there was a layer of PDLC, poly polymer dispersed liquid crystals, which should have or which have the uh, possibility of shutting off the, the light. So it's a curtain, you'd say. This is two years after at um, CONFAC, which is a factory in northern Jutland, uh, uh, producing, uh, fabricating um, panels. Uh, and this is full scale. So now here we are building the first uh, panel with these optic fibers. And he has been installed at Danish Technological Institute, where I'm situated. I didn't mention that in the beginning. Uh, I work at Danish Technological Institute uh, at Hoyt Trostrup, but we are all over Denmark, of course, and also abroad. We have a facility called Energy Flex Office where this should be uh, tested uh, for, in, in well, for, for all kinds of uh, things relevant for, uh, for building elements. But I won't go into that. I'd rather go, go into do, to the creative process about using the concrete and the optic fibers together. This is the result from the inside and this is from the outside. Of course, well, now the light is a bit... Uh, um, well, the light is not strong here. Um, so this is, yeah, I have a zoom here. The thing is, when you place, place an optic fiber, you'd have, of course, light coming in, but also light going out when, light, when it's dark. So the components in the bright wall panel is optic fibers. This is a draw tower. I'm not sure whether any of you is aware of it, but the thing is you have preform, and then it's being pulled just like a, uh, yeah, it's been, butcher, that brings a sweet. Nah, yeah. I have a preform, two materials, and it's being pulled, Onto the right thickness. And normally you have you have optic fibers on a on a on a spool, but we we, we produce some on a or we produce some stiff ones, which was able to be placed in the in the panel. The concept was to be able to freely place an optic fiber wherever you like it. Another component in the sandwich panel is the insulation, of course. It can be boards, it can be mats, it can be granulate, it can be foam. It can be baked like a uh, like aluminium, or it can be a baked, uh, cementitious uh, based uh, insulation, or it can of course be a sandwich panel with bio bio insulation. And then the concrete. Um, I won't go into uh, the mix design because it's kind of heavy. Uh, but first, you need to make lab tests. So we design the concrete. What is in it? The con concrete com com is composed by stone, uh, sand, cement, and water, and then some plasticizers or uh, viscosity modifiers. And then, of course, it has to be taken into the factory, so concrete in the fabrication state. We have to see whether this measure and this measure is the same. And then, of course, bunches of prototypes. Uh, how does this look? How does it work? Um, what happens? Some might see that there's a kind of a white thing happening here. Um, it's due to the uh, concrete composition, and uh, one of the partners, you in studio, based in Holland, uh, was very happy with uh, with this because it gave kind of a signature to the to the building surface. 
some more. And then, of course, the process has to be designed. How do we handle concrete, optic fibers, insulation? And then what I haven't mentioned yet, yet concrete also have reinforcement, which is steel rebars most often, uh, and then have to be placed, of course, between the, the optic fibers. Um, today, we have the digital uh, tools, and it's pretty easy and convenient to, to make a 3D model, simply placing the, showing where, what has to be. And then, of course, how do we make these things work when concrete is being cast? It's kind of heavy. It weighs two and a half times as much as water, so it's far more heavy than, than, uh, than snow. And when it moves, how does it not move the, the components? And then, of course, full scale. And here's the final, um, the final panel, one of them. Uh, and Rob Henderson from UN Studio investigating it, seeing whether um, because architecture is uh, always a question of scale. You, 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 you perceive the building from a long distance, and it has one impression, and then you move on, and it gets another one. So if architecture should be alive, then it should have different levels of, uh, of information. And then what happens when it gets wet? So does the light from the other side is it more bright than the light on this side? So the, the, what, what happens is actually mixing the light on one side to the other. So one would argue, and I would argue, that it's not a transparent facade, but I'll return to that. It rather moves the inside out, or mixes the inside and the outside. And then, of course, when it dries out, what happens with the concrete when it's dry? Then it's white. When it's not dry, then it's darker. That's an explanation, but everybody knows. Often we're very concerned of what is the color of the concrete. But what perhaps have a more or bigger effect on, on, on the visual, uh, on the visual um, impression or the appearance is uh, whether it's wet or not. So using very small reliefs or just the surface texture change in the concrete, then you can change the, the appearance of the, of the surface. And on the very close, you see these small black lines is where the optic fiber has been cut. It's, it's three millimeters thick. I brought some samples. We can just pack them out later and then have a chat. Um, and that's why the light is being bended in a wrong direction. But nevertheless, it gives a, it gives a, um, a kind of a, a natural, or say, a process. It's, it's like a fingerprint on, uh, on the, from the process on the final product. And then on transparency, this was a. Uh, the polymer dispersed liquid, uh, liquid crystal layer, uh, it was moved outside the panel uh, of practical reasons and also because it's rather, at this point it's rather expensive, so it should be possible for the customer to, to choose it and not choose it. But here, perhaps you're familiar with these glass plates where light is being turned on and then they become, they, they become murky. That's what happens here. And then, then some light is being cast out sideways. Um, you see it here on the, on the close-up uh, from the side of the of, of some of the light is being trend, or being moved to the side or bended. But what is perhaps more interesting in this, that what we, we have created is what we call a smart aggregate. The aggregates are the stones and also the sand. It's the natural materials, which is 80% of the, of the material. Um, and this is the optic fiber, of course. And the point is that when these are turned off or when there's no light, then they'll hide within the other aggregates. But when they're on, they'll suddenly appear. And that's the ambience uh, or the, the, perhaps one of the most, most interesting things is that we're able to embed functions and we're able to embed creative uh, motives or whatever into the concrete. And then when they're turned off, they are hidden. And then of course, if it's dark outside, they, it will only be the image. I'll just see whether it's, it's still running. One, two, three, yes. Um, then about design, well, of course, the reason for, for this project is we want to design something on the, on the surface. And if you have an image, this is the original image. No, sorry, this is the original image. Images, there are different principles of uh, making an image from an image. Uh, you can either uh, bundle the pixels, so you kind of put a lot of colors or light or shadow on a certain point, and then you get something which is different from the from, from, from the neighbor, like here, here's a lot of, a lot of uh, shadow, and over here is a lot of light. Or you can subtract, or you can move pixels. That's basically what you do when you do images using laser cutting or whatever. You make holes, you make pixels. 
Um, and we chose uh, a combination, but this was the one used in the final, um, in the final product. Of course, what is it all about? It's about creating architecture. So what is out there? Uh, facades, which is able to bend and so on, and um, with a different degree of transparency. There's no doubt that the architecture today is uh, perhaps moving away from glass boxes and then some laser cut uh, film on at the outside because it simply has some um, limitations in, in, in of limitations in, uh, in order of, uh, uh, of creation. So this was the final image. Uh, here you'd see that the pixels are placed in a grid. There's a bit of a variation, it's part of the process. Um, but the pixels do not have to be placed in a grid. They can be placed freely. So we can use the other concept, the bundling. This is the subtraction concept. Uh, or we can simply just place one, pi one pixel if we want. It all builds on um, a portfolio of embedded technology where um, the very first attempt uh, was about simply putting optic fibers as we know them into concrete. And now we've developed a different kind of fiber actually which uh, is based on um, uh, polycarbonate due to its fire resistance rather than acrylate which is a normal uh, plastic uh, optic fibers. And, um, but it's basically about taking something which is normally not in, inside concrete and then put it into it. Like here we use LED, this is a project for Femon built, using LED uh, spots of a quite large size, but then making some voids where these parts of technology can, uh, can be placed. It's all made, all realistic due to the, to the uh, digital tools. We're able to draw it, we're able to con uh, conceive, uh, con make the concept or conceive it, and we're able to fabricate it. This is a robot we have, but there are lots of around Denmark. I think 500 is installed every year. Um, it's able to, it has power of, a, of a, a chainsaw. It's able to remove a lot of material, but it can also drill very tiny, small holes. So the largest drill we have is 60 millimeters, and the smallest is 0 0.95 millimeters. So the thing is that we also have some tools which has a, love, a large span, or working span of, of scale. Um, this is a project using uh, artificial light. Where we made, we, it's called a, a Digistone. We made a screen. I have an example of the concrete part um, with a very, very precise placement of the, of the optic fibers. Uh, 20 microns, which is 1 15th part of a millimeter. While this is placed with 2 5 millimeters precision. And in this case, the, the architect or the, the builder, they, they prefer the, the variation simply because otherwise the grid becomes too rigid. While producing optic, uh, a, a screen for, uh, for showing an image, you need to be able to meet the, the, the LED on the other side, which is very, very tiny. It has three or four chambers. And if any of them fall outside the optic fiber, you would lose that color. So it simply has to be placed very, very precisely. And it's possible with these tools, and it's possible within concrete, because it's a very precise material if you do the formwork precisely. This is the, just the very first project we did. The, the objective was to create a double curve screen, and um, it can be utilized for information. That's just to explain the pictures. This is a sign, and then imagine it used in, in, um, in, uh, in our uh, infrastructure, for example, being able to for that dynamic, um, dynamic uh, the signature, and it can also, of course, be used just for decoration. Um, what showed was that due to the optic fibers uh, or the light guides, uh, it does have a spatial filtration, so it throws out the light not ambiently, but in a direction. It makes a direction on the light. Then you, it looks glossy. It looks like a, like a lens. So if you move around, the highlight would, would follow you which creates a transparency of the wall. You, you, you look at a concrete item and it suddenly looks like, a, or it appears like a piece of glass uh, because the highlight moves with you. The way of realizing something like that, this one, I've, just for the record, this has 3,000 pixels, which is a quarter of one icon on a smartphone. So we're not, we're not working to compete with the information technology we have in our pockets. We're simply trying to add something extra or add something to the, to the built environment. So this is five, uh, 3,000 optic fibers. Um, 
And the thing is that we are able to, or any of us are able to, have one point in space and connect it to any other point in space. That is perhaps what mega data is about. So it's having one point somewhere in here that reflects to a very specific other point somewhere in here. And that's just a piece, I mean, this is just architecture, it's just physical, but that is what happens in our spatial, I mean, the way that we understand space today. Um, and it can be processed. Nobody can do this by, by the mind, but we can, we can process this on, on, on a normal laptop. And then we can do the drilling and we can do the fixing, laser cutting, blah, 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 and also the mounting by the, these electronic means, but also craftsmanship. I believe that the new industrialization is a combination, and that's also what we see in digital tools. Ten years ago, people th said, okay, we're going to print a house. I just press a button and it comes out. Today, people are getting aware that if you do laser cutting, for example, it's a very simple process that I'm quite sure you all are familiar with. You need to know the tricks of the trade. You need to know whether you have to go right or back. And you know that it, it, I mean, it, it cuts not, it doesn't cut uh, rectangle. It does a cut like this. You have to tilt the swivel of the head. And you know to be, know what's inside and outside. That's craftsmanship. And that's what we're going into today. I mean, the creatives, whether we combine these digital tools with the physical tools. So, natural light, because... This is about, uh, this is about um, well, artificial light, but bright wall is about natural light. And natural light consists of different colors. These different colors have different wavelengths. I guess you're all familiar. familiar. These wavelengths, they is a number. They can be 580 nanometers or whatever. This is information, and this is in the information world. What can be put into um, and con conceived as being information. The di word digital, as far as I know, and please uh, let, me make, let me know if you know something different, but it derives from digitus, which means finger. So it's a Roman number, or a Roman word, a Latin word. So finger is about one finger. So it's either there's a finger or there's not, none. So it's either or, which is, of course, the binary system, either or. While our work these past five years on adding light to concrete surfaces. It's more about the tactile. It's not about one or no, none, but rather, how does it feel? How does it look? What does it mean to me? It can't be transfer, tra directly tra transferred into, into um, uh, yes or no, or one or zero, but rather as a feeling, of, which just disappears just as a, as a, as a second you, you have it. Um, so what we did, we, while the, the, while the Artificial light was about making a performative screen, which would perform according to other screens. Then this project was more, Brightwall was more about trying to add a, a texture or a, a tactile level of information to the, to the concrete. So, if I may sum up, uh, the transparency is perhaps not, or this project is not about transparency, to be honest, because you don't see through it. You see, actually, the only thing which is transparent is vacuum, it's the outer space. It's, it's rather about translucency. It's about letting light coming from one side to the other and then adding something. It can either be a spatial type filtration, like the one that happens inside the, the optic fiber. It can be this dark little thing that occurs when it's cut at the end of the day when people are getting tired. Or it can be this little, a little, little mis misalignment uh, and just connecting one side to the other. And perhaps it's not even about translucency, but about, about trans appearance. So what appears on one side can appear in a reduced or in an added form on the other side. So um, I think this would be my words. Um, I said thank you for your attention. I have brought some small uh, samples that I'll just, we can pack out and we can have a look if you want. And um, thanks for your time. Yeah.